Uh, we need to effectively climate proof all of our overseas development assistance. We're lending money or giving money away, one of the two, to very poor countries on agricultural projects, water projects, biodiversity projects. Unless we climate proof those investments, that money to some degree will not be used as efficiently. So climate change has to be, as I said right at the beginning, integrated into all sectoral policies and national economic uh, development. Oops. So what do we need on adaptation strategy? It's got to be a risk-based approach. So we need risk management plans. We need legislation and enforcement. We need financing for adaptation. We need education. We need information. At the bottom of the day, though, if we don't have good governance, you cannot adapt to climate change, and neither can you mitigate climate change. So a key challenge with respect to developing countries, is to work with them. They need to decide what their aspirations are for the future. We need to work with the whole world. We need to start to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions in the UK first. We need to show how you can adapt in a cost-effective way. And we need to share financing, technology, and information with the rest of the world to show how this can be done cost-effectively. Those that say, why don't we just adapt rather than, why don't we mit rather than mitigate, there are physical limits to our ability to adapt, there are behavioural limits, there are technological limits, and there are actually financial limits. So we have to think very carefully about to what degree do we mitigate greenhouse gas emissions to protect the climate system, and to what degree do we adapt. But adaptation is not the solution. We need to bring the two hand in hand. Therefore, and I'm just about finished now, the long, we need a long-term goal. We need developed country targets to start to take the lead. We need a graduated approach to bring developing countries on board, especially the large emitters. We need a carbon market to buy and sell carbon. The atmosphere doesn't care where the carbon emissions are, doesn't care if they're from the US or China or India or Mali. So we should have buy the carbon emission abatement wherever it's cheapest in the world. We need to use today's technology and we need to develop tomorrow's technology. We need to adapt. It is not just an energy issue. It's also how we deal with our land, land use change and forestry. And we need to bring aviation and maritime in. The conclusion is fairly straightforward. There is no dichotomy between environmental protection and economic growth. We need to get the economics right. We need to eliminate perverse subsidies across all sectors. We need to value the ecosystem services. We need to internalize all the externalities. Uh, we need to recognize that when you measure the wealth of a nation, GDP is a totally flawed concept. It's a useful concept, but it's a flawed concept. So we need to complement GDP by built human, natural, and social capital. We need to realize there are cost-effective and equitable solutions to address issues such as climate change, biodiversity loss, ecosystem degradation. But we need political will. We need moral leadership. But we need changes in policies, practices, and technologies which are substantial and are not currently underway. We need the public and private sector to take a long-term perspective. Advances in science and technology are important. And probably the most important, which is normally on my slide and not here, we as scientists need to learn to communicate. We've got to get rid of the jargon we normally talk in. We need to be able to talk to each other across disciplines. We need to be able to talk to politicians. We need to be able to talk to the media. We need to explain what our science is telling us. And so people will actually understand the implications of our actions today and understand what different policies, practices will do in the future. Thank you.